acquainted. This is good. I've got, uh, I've got a birthday coming up in one week. That's exciting, yeah. I'm turning 29 years old, which is kind of an uncomfortable age, you know? Like, I'm worried I'm running out of time to become a child prodigy. <laughs> that makes sense? You don't hear a whole, about a whole lot about prodigies, like, bouncing off in their 30s, you know? <laughs> Clock's ticking. I tried to be good at stuff when I was younger, you know? I tried a lot of stuff. Um, one thing my parents forced me to do, they made me take uh, piano lessons for, like, a decade. It's actually traumatizing just standing next to one right now. <laughs> it's kind of cruel. I don't know why they did this to me. I was not good at piano. I didn't like playing piano, but uh, the way my parents justified it to me at the time was they told me I'd be grateful for it when I was older because, quote, there's nothing that people like better at a party <laughs> than a guy who knows how to play the piano. So any wild guesses out there for how many times I've played piano at a party? <laughs> Zero times you win, you got it. Zero times for all that. And honestly, that is fine, right? Because a party that ends with me playing the piano at it, that's just a terrible party, right? No, what kind of social, listen, what kind of social gathering builds up to that point where the host is looking around being like, all right, people are having a good time, we're vibing. Hey everybody, gather around. Uh, we're gonna turn on the lights all the way up and listen to Dan bang out, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> that party anthem, yeah. Shouting down the hallway like, hey, you guys in the bathroom doing drugs. You wanna experience a real high, get on out here. Dan's gonna sit in front of this Yamaha keyboard and press most of the right buttons. That's how you know I'm not a good piano player, guys. I called the keys buttons, all right? <laughs> Catch that little detail. Got to pay attention. Keep you on your toes. That's good. Uh, I'm doing fine now. I live here in the city. I live with my girlfriend, which is very nice. Yes, cohabitating. Big round of applause. I definitely encourage it, guys. Um, like, living with your girlfriend, it's a dream come true. If you've ever dreamed of having all your stuff covered in someone else's hair. It's, it's odd. It just gets everywhere. They shed somehow. Like, I found dust bunnies made out of nothing but her hair, which is both gross and impressive. I have mixed feelings about the dust bunnies, you know? Like, on one hand, they are easier to take care of than actual bunnies. On the other hand, they don't taste nearly as good. Not great to have around. Uh, before I lived with my girlfriend, I went through, like, a revolving door of roommates. I've had, like, 20, which is not that unusual for New York honestly, but uh, those roommate relationships are actually kind of special. I cherish those looking back because it wasn't until I had like all these roommates that I realized there are grown ass adults out there who are just totally incapable of caring for themselves. You bond, right? Like it's weird, most people get roommates just to save money on rent, right? But a few people get roommates in case they start to like drown in the bathtub. <laughs> they need someone there. I've had some dumb, Roommates, man. I had a roommate, uh, whenever he'd cook eggs, right, he would take the broken eggshells and put them back inside the carton, back inside the refrigerator. <laughs> Which is disgusting. I said, dude, why are you doing this? Why are you keeping your eggshells? And he told me, that's how I keep track of how many I have left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coincidentally, the dude got a ton of mail from the IRS, so probably not great with numbers, but... Uh, <laughs> That's his problem. I tried to be friends with a lot of my roommates at first. Don't know if you guys are in that boat. By the end, I didn't even want to know their full names, you know? Like, you realize at a certain point, you don't need that many friends, right? Friends just kind of pile up. They accumulate. Like, I look at my friend group the same way I look at the bundle of plastic bags I keep underneath my sink, if that makes sense. You know, because I'll get one, I'll look at it, and I think, oh, wow, this will come in handy someday. But uh, then when I see them all lumped together, I realize they're mostly garbage. Oh. Ouch. Ouch. Anti-friend crowd. <laughs> there's a woman in intense pain in the front row. Get her some help. Now, New York's cool. Like, there's so much to do, especially when you look at other places, see what they do for fun. I'm from uh, Pennsylvania. Interesting place. I think we have the weirdest tourist attraction in the country. And I'm talking about uh, going to visit the Amish. Any of you guys ever go do that? Yeah. All right, big Amish clap, that's what we like to see. Yeah, they bill it as this whole educational, cultural experience, right? But like, checking out the Amish, it really just boils down to staring at people that are different from you, right? 
It's like, hey, you want to go see some ugly Christians do some yard work? That'll be fun. Fun way to spend a Saturday. Oh, hey, you know that group of people that just wants to be left alone? Let's get a busload of sixth graders out there. That'll be good for their peace of mind. Like, they're not a joyful people, the Amish. They're not happy to see you. They just got so many rules, too. You know, like, I don't know if you know this. They're children, uh, like any dolls or toys they play with. They're not allowed to have faces for some reason. Yeah. Apparently, uh, the Amish, they don't believe in fun, but they do believe in nightmares. <laughs> it's tough. And what do the Amish do for fun anyway? They make quilts, which is just kind of sad. I think we can all agree that quilts are easily the least sexy of the bed linens. You know what I mean? Because, like, if you see a naked woman lying underneath a sheet, you think, oh, wow, I'm about to get laid. You see a naked woman lying underneath a quilt, you think, oh, God, she must be really sick. <laughs> all right, I'm Dan Fitzpatrick. Keep it going for the show. <laughs> <laughs>